Hi there, this is Lula LV. Thank you so much for clicking on this video and spending some of your time with me. As always, I hope you're having a good one. Today's video will discuss the handbags I regret purchasing and why, so you can hopefully avoid the same mistakes I did. If all that sounds interesting to you, please keep watching. And before we get into it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. The first of the three bags we're going to talk about today is the impulse purchase. And this is my Telfar. Let's open it up. And this was an impulse purchase. If I had done a little bit more research, I probably would have realized before I bought it that this size would not suit me. This is the medium shopper. It is usually sold out on the Telfar site. So I happened to go on the website and I saw that they were running the bag security program. So I knew if I wanted one of these bags, I could order it that day, but I had to order it quickly. So I didn't have time to do a lot of research on this bag. The list price for this item was $202. So I purchased it without doing any research. I figured for that price, I might as well just get it. Well, <laughs> typically when I use a tote bag, I use either my Neverfull MM, which is the medium size, or my Longchamp Le Pliage in the large size. I have two small children. So typically when I go out with my kids, I have a lot of items to carry with me between all of my essentials as well as their essentials. So when I do need a tote bag, I need something with a lot of space. And I found when I used this that I couldn't fit as much in here as I could fit in my Neverfull or my Longchamp. So I ended up just not reaching for this because when I did need a large bag, my other ones could fit a little bit more in them. And the other reason why this didn't work out for me is the drop length on the handle. If I wear this on my shoulder, it is quite long, so the bag sits pretty low. Even though I am pretty tall, I'm five feet eight inches. And if I wore this crossbody, the top handle would hit right under my bust. And when I was walking and moving around, it would just be kind of annoying. So the size of this bag really didn't work for me. I have no other complaints about the bag. I know it's really popular and for a good reason. My second regret is actually a good regret and I will explain why. This is what I like to call the designer dupe, AKA the test subject. So this is a coach bag. I'm not sure what happened to the original dust bag. So I just grabbed another coach dust bag I had and put it inside. This is the Emery and this is in the color Elm. I purchased this, I believe about a year and a half ago. It's a pretty simple bag with a slip pocket on the back a large open compartment with a zipper. There's one slip pocket in the back. And um, excuse me, this is actually the front. And on the back, there is one smaller zip pocket. This is, I like to call, even though it is a coach original design, I like to call it a designer dupe because this is roughly the same size as well as the same style as the Hermes Evelyn PM. And the Evelyn was a bag that caught my interest. I thought it looked like a really great, easy, everyday bag. However, the retail price is in the thousands. And this Emery is the same size, very close to the same style. However, the price point was much lower. The retail price when I purchased it was $395, but I bought it on sale for $197, so roughly half price. So I bought this bag because I thought the Evelyn might be something I would be interested in 
let me try out this style and see if it worked for me. And to be honest, it wasn't my favorite. Just because of the shape of the bag, it's very tall and narrow. So when I put my items inside, I would often have smaller items fall down to the bottom. I would have to take out one or two other items in order to grab them from the bottom of my bag. It wasn't really easy for me to fish those items out. So this was a regret, but it was a good re regret because I spent $200 on this bag versus buying the Evelyn for say $3,000 and regretting that purchase. And finally, the last bag I regret purchasing is what I like to call the Enigma. And it is my Louis Vuitton Speedy Bandolier 30 and I do not have it here because I decided to sell it. It is the first and only luxury bag that I've sold out of my collection. Since I don't have the bag, I'm going to just insert footage I have of the bag while I talk about it. I call this the Enigma because I did my research about the bag and by all accounts, it should have worked really well for me but I found myself just not reaching for it. It can be styled very casually and I have a very casual lifestyle. It is also a larger size handbag. I carry a lot with me. It can be used top handle. It also came with a strap with the extender in the middle so it could be used as a shoulder bag or a crossbody bag very versatile. I also bought it in the Damia Bean, which is very easy to care for. Um, so again, it ticked off all the boxes of everything I was looking for, but I found myself just not reaching for it because it has a very luggage-like vibe to it. It was initially created to serve as a piece of luggage, as um, like an overnight bag or a weekend bag. And when I wanted to use a purse, I would gravitate more towards something like my Alma PM. And even though I did my research on the bag and it should have worked out for me, I just found myself not reaching for it. I'm not the type of person who likes to buy and resell. I do like to purchase items that I will have with me for a long time but I just never reached for this bag. And at the price tag of $1,600, it was a lot of money just sitting in my closet that I wasn't using. And eventually I just decided that it would be better to have the bag go to a home where it would be appreciated and used more. So eventually I decided to sell it and I went the route of using a consignment service. I reached out to a few places locally, as well as a few uh, stores that have an online presence. And I ended up going with Julia Rose Boston. She primarily sells through her Instagram account. She is a very well established and reputable seller. Really, it just came down to the quotes I received. I would be able to make back the most money on my bag, what I spent on it if I went through her service. I sent the bag off. It should be listed for sale any day now. If anyone's interested, while the item is available, I will include the link in the description box below so you can check out the listing. So far, so good, no complaints. I submitted my request for a quote. They got back to me very quickly. It was a smooth transaction where I mailed my pieces out to them. They received them. Um, I did sell a pair of shoes as well. I absolutely love these shoes. They were new in box. I never wore them, but they were just too small for me. And I knew that I would never wear them if they weren't comfortable. So before I even wore them, um, I figured since I was sending my Speedy off to them to sell, I would also send them Manolos. Yeah, that's the story. If you have any questions about using a consignment service um, or you'd like an update on how that experience goes, let me know and, and I can do another video. So these are my three bags I regret purchasing. The Impulse Purchase, 
the designer dupe and the third being the enigma my speedy bandolier 30 which by all accounts should have worked out for me but didn't i hope this helps you if you liked this video please give it a thumbs up please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and i hope you enjoy the rest of your day and i hope to see you in my next video Bye bye now